So I was chilling in Home Kingdom with my main account looking for forts, resources, Sunset Canyon, blah blah blah. Then I told myself, I need to be doing something else in off seasons to be able to create more content. And I finally decided to create a new account, a jumper account where we plan everything step by step, no useless sculpture investments, no bad equipment, perfect gem spending, replay KVK 1, 2, 3, stream all the fights, share account progression every single week. So today's video will be an extremely detailed Rise of Kingdoms jumper guide for 2023. This video is divided by two main parts. First, we will discuss best tips and tricks for jumper for new Rise of Kingdoms accounts, what to do and what to not do. And in the second part, we will have a special guest who has a lot of experience with jumper accounts, projects and groups, etc. And we will ask him a bunch of questions. Without further ado, let's go! Spartans! What is your profession? <laughs> the very first thing before you do anything about your new account, a jumper account, it is better if you find a jumper group, a jumper project. And the way you find it is quite simple. You just go through Discord, for example. In our Discord, we have this jumper section. You can find a lot of jumper groups, a lot of jumper ads, or you can go for a Rise of Kingdoms channel, recruiting you. Again, a lot of kingdoms and a lot of jumper groups trying to recruit new people. So before you create an account, before you plan a new jumper account, make sure that you join to a good, decent, helpful jumper group so that you are not alone in your new kingdom and most likely you can avoid civil wars. First thing is the way you create your account. You can just go to character management and you can click, ah, come on man, you can click create new and select the latest kingdom. This is an option, but there is a better way. And the better way to start a new account is that you need to have another account that you haven't logged in, not account, but a character that you haven't logged in for I think it's 30 days. So that account is like inactive. And if I'm not mistaken, it needs to have at least level eight CD hold. So if you have an account that you haven't logged in for like around 30 days, and it does have a level eight CD hold, at least you can go ahead and log into that account and you will encounter with this screen, if you create your new character with this screen, you will get a bunch of extra rewards. So if you have that inactive account, go ahead and create your character through that account so that you can get extra rewards. When you first create your account, it's going to ask you which civilization you want to pick. The answer is quite simple. You want to go with China. We will discuss this in detail with Jay, but for now, just trust me and go with China. It's usually between Britain and China because you get Boudica and a peacekeeping commander is generally good at the start of a new kingdom, a new account, but the correct pick is China. Once we confirm it, we are going to get that little cutscene and then you cannot do anything because you need to do everything the game tells you to do. Let's start. This part is quite boring, so you may want to sing. Look at that Mark's woman running away. Go ahead and fight, bitch. I think it's finally over, right? Now we can take a look at events and bundles. So since we started new, we have Minamoto. We will talk about this spending priority again with Jay. I'm already tired. Let me get a quick bite from my, from my protein bar. Pretty good. So far, we created our new character the right way. We picked China and we finished the intro. The very next thing that you want to do is you want to click on inventory and check for this beginner's immigration because some people did report that they didn't have this for some reason in their inventory. Do not work on your jumper account if you don't have it because this means you cannot jump to your final kingdom and please pay attention to that. It has only 10 days to use it. So you're gonna spend 10 days in your first kingdom, maybe even not 10 days, you don't want to risk it, like seven to 10 days in your first kingdom and then you are going to jump to your final kingdom by using this beginner's immigration. And this is so important, if you just scroll down, unused beginner's immigration items will be removed once your city hall reaches level 8 or once the season 1 eve of the crusade has begun. This means if you upgrade any other building, which is just city hall, because unless your city hall is level 8, you cannot upgrade anything to level 8. So if your city hall is higher than level 7, you won't be able to use this beginner's immigration. This means you won't be able to jump to your final kingdom. This is so important. You don't want to upgrade any building past level seven, because if you do, you won't be able to jump, you will lose that beginner's immigration, and it's not going to be a jumper account, it's going to be pointless. You will be wasting all that time that you spend on this account. We are going to discuss this with details in a bit, but simply what you want to do in this first kingdom, in the kingdom that you have created your account, the kingdom that you are going to jump from, you want to get all your buildings to level 7. 
you want to research as much as you can, you want to train troops, increase power, etc. Another thing that you must not do in your first kingdom is claiming these quest rewards. Because what they do is they give you a bunch of resources. But the thing is, since you are going to migrate away from this kingdom, you are going to jump to the latest kingdom in like 7 to 10 days, check your storehouse, click info, food protection, wood protection, both 300. And once you get it to level 7, these are going to be 500, stone 375, and gold 250. If you have any resources that are higher than these thresholds, they are going to be wasted because you won't be able to migrate, jump to the new kingdom with all those resources. You can only take these number of resources because your storehouse will be level 7. So don't claim these rewards. What you want to do is to claim them in your final kingdom. The next thing which is really important, I mean everything <laughs> with your jump account is quite important, so please pay attention to that, is clearing the fog as much as you can in your first kingdom and in your final kingdom, a kingdom that you will jump. Because you want to search for villages and you want to explore mysterious caves. Those mysterious caves have three tiers of treasure levels. It is either high, medium or low. But every character in Rise of Kingdoms is capped with 400 mysterious caves. Yes, you can still explore caves once you did 400, but the thing is, once you explore 400, every single treasure level will go down to low. So hypothetically, let's say this was a mysterious cave with high treasure reward. If we explore, if we investigate 400 caves, this will automatically go down to low tier reward. What you want to do is that you want to investigate medium and high tier level caves and only after that you want to investigate low tier rewards because if you keep investigating low tier rewards you will automatically decrease the treasure level of high and medium tiers back to low which is going to hurt your account a lot. So first investigate high tier and medium tier treasure level caves and once you are done with all of them then you can go down to low tier. Another thing that is going to give you some extra value is that if you click on settings and redeem you can claim same gift code both in the kingdom that you have started your account and in the kingdom that you jump to. Click on settings, click on redeem and claim it ASAP. So if you have a gift code, claim it in your first kingdom and then you can also claim it in the next kingdom, the, your final kingdom that you are going to jump. So simply you are just doubling the value by doing nothing extra. One more jumper tip about events. If we take a quick look at events in our first kingdom, we have Rise of Kingdoms, Glory of Battle, Victory in Hand and Hero Returns. Now Hero Returns and Rise of Kingdoms is attached to each other because what you do is you progress on this Rise of Kingdoms quest and from this chest you will get a bunch of Emblem of Loyalties and you can spend these Emblem of Loyalties in Hero's Return section for good amount of resources, some speed ups, silver keys, sculptures for your first starting civilization commander, epic commander and Cleopatra. But the thing is, if we take a look at for example day one and quest number two, it wants you to upgrade your city hall to pass level seven. And we already discussed you don't want to pass level seven because you want to be able to migrate, right? Basically what you want to do is that you want to progress as much as you can, you want to complete as many quests as you can in this Rise of Kingdoms event, but you don't want to click on this chest top right because if you do you will claim the number of emblem of loyalties that you gathered so far but obviously you won't be able to finish some quests so do not click on this because this progression will transfer to your next kingdom so you want to complete as many quests as you can don't click on this one once you jump as i said your progression will be transferred to your final kingdom and then in your final kingdom after you complete everything you're going to click on this chest you're going to get every single emblem of loyalty and you will pretty much clear this hero returns section. And the second thing is glory of battle. If you manage to reach 1.5 million power, you will get a bunch of good rewards. Look at that speed ups. This is amazing. And the most valuable one, in my opinion, is that hidden lotus, which is a really good starting cavalry city skin that gives 5% extra cav attack. This is very possible to complete if you are spending a little bit, if you're a low spender. But even for free-to-plays, there are a bunch of players who manage to reach 1.5 million as a free-to-play. It is a hard challenge, it is quite tough. I think the best way to do it is quite complicated, but if I'm not mistaken, it is... Let me explain you in paint. This might be a little bit messed up, but I'm gonna try to do my best. So let's say we have this Kingdom A, Kingdom B, and Kingdom C. This is the first kingdom of your jumper account, and in 7 to 10 days, 
you are going to jump to kingdom A and it's going to be your final kingdom. But what you can do is, before this kingdom B is created, you can start a new character in kingdom C, which is older than kingdom B. You can work on this account as much as you can until kingdom B is created. And the main event that you are chasing is Lohar's trial. You want to get like a lot of Lohar's bucklers, you know, the, that green and blue item that you can summon Lohar. So with that account one, you are going to gather a bunch of Lohar item to summon him. And then once kingdom B is created, you are going to create your account number two, which is your main account, your jumper account. And you will jump from kingdom C to kingdom B with this account number one, which has a lot of Lohars. And in that kingdom B, with your account number one and account number two, you are going to kill all those low hearts together and you will get a bunch of resources so that you can push for that 1.5 million power. I know it's not very detailed. I think there are guides in YouTube how to do it. So feel free to go ahead and check those out after this video is finished. But simply, this is the main idea. How can you get a lot of value? How can you just push for that 1.5 million for a bunch of resources, a bunch of speed ups, gems, not resources, I'm sorry. But the main thing is gold keys and obviously Hidden Lotus, a great beginner city skin. Now we are going to move on to Q&A section with Jay, as I said at the beginning of the video, who is a very experienced jumper player, I should say. We are going to ask him a bunch of questions related, you know, jumper projects, jumper accounts, what to do, what to not do. And he will give us very valuable answers. And by the way, link to Jay's channel is also in the description. Go ahead and check him out. Without further ado, Let's start the Q&A section. Welcome to Spartan Gaming, Jay. We have some questions for you regarding jump accounts, and I've already mentioned that you have a lot of experience. I want you to introduce yourself, then we can start with question number one. Hi, uh, I am Jaden. I uh, love making you know videos on YouTube. I like to help people out on various kingdoms, uh, especially with jumper projects and how to start the best ways. I'm going to talk about that today with a jumper guide. And um, yeah, it's basically what I do, YouTube and stuff. I love doing it. Um, yeah, it's part of my life. Yeah, perfect. So here comes the question number one. We all know that the best starting civilization for jump accounts is China, but can you explain why that's the case? Yes, yeah, so China. Um, some people may argue that Britain is the best, uh, you know, other ones, but China uh, is the main one to go for because uh, you have 5% building speed and you get one of the best epics in the game to start off with, which is also really good in the future KVKs to come. So I started this account just to make this video, and I'm in the first kingdom. Obviously, this is not our main kingdom. We will jump from this kingdom to our final kingdom, but the question is, what are the things to do in that 10 days in this first kingdom? Uh, so there's, there's loads of different things you can do. Uh, the main thing that I like to do with, uh, simply is villages and caves because uh, you can get about 3 million XP for your commanders with villages. Oh my um, god. Yeah, I didn't insane. know that. Uh, with caves, um, I believe you can get around 2,000-ish gems if you get all the high ones. Mm -hmm. um, you get a, a, ton, a ton of kingdom maps. Apart from that, Smashing Barbarians has got to be the best one. Uh, there is events in the starting in the starting kingdom. Uh, maybe yep. Lohar's trial might pop up at one point. Mm -hmm. That's the best event for free to plays. Uh, you just want to smash that out, and you, it's so much value. So what we do in the first kingdom: a lot of barbarians and Lohar's trial and other events. All right, perfect. After jumping to final kingdom. What are the most important events, the early game, early kingdom events to pay attention? Again, you'll get low house trial uh, mm -hmm. around three days in. That is obviously the best event in the game, possibly. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's also loads of, of events like uh, the guy you get gathering events, you get, um, you might get Champions Olympia, I'm not sure yet, but um, mm -hmm. you'll get uh, training events, you'll get game of power. There's just so many events that will pop up that will help you in the game that you should focus on. Uh, at the start of the game, we won't have access. I mean, we will have access, but we are not going to expertise any uh, legendary commanders. So epics are the main commanders. Which epics are priority? Should we work on gatherers or peacekeepers first? So I want to give you an example of me. Um, mm -hmm. This epic I, I go for uh, is Sun Tzu. In any situation you're going to be attacked or you're on, on the field, Sun Tzu is just all around the best. Mm -hmm. You're starting Kingdom, you don't need to focus on gatherers because you don't need to gather. Yeah. But, um, Yes, there is some you need to focus on. Peace, uh, especially peacekeepers, they help you out with uh, barbarians like Boudicca, 
um, and a lot more. So in first kingdom, peacekeepers are obviously more important. And the second kingdom, then you can start focusing on gatherers. The order you focus on gatherers should be advanced, elite, and epic, right? So you first work on your uh, centurion. And then you work on your like Sarka, Constance, Gaius. Because green sculptures, the blue sculptures are cheaper. And they are uh, cheaper to get XP. You start with green, then go to blue, and then... And lastly, you are going to focus on your epic gatherers. The main thing we are going to do for months, we are going to upgrade buildings and we are going to research. So what is the, other than City Hall, obviously, priority upgrades when it comes to buildings and priority upgrades when it comes to research? Uh, so I want to we read out the main building. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, when you click on your City Hall, uh, it'll give you a bunch of stuff that you need to upgrade first. These are the sort of things that you need to upgrade first for your, obviously, obviously for your city hall. But um, one thing that really gets me every single time is the Alliance Center. I upgrade that first on every single time I level up simply because you get more helps. Uh, it takes off more time of your buildings. Mm -hmm. And Castle and Watchtower do help a lot as well. Also, you can get the arrows from uh, Blowhouse Trial, you know, for uh, Bad Forts. Um, it helps so much in the future for castle and alliance centers. You go for alliance center because every single time you upgrade alliance center, you are increasing the number of help that you are going to get for your buildings, research, healing, so that you are kind of saving more uh, speed ups if you upgrade your alliance center uh, quicker, right? Yes. So how about technology? So when I take a look at technology, uh, the first things I think about is engineering and mathematics. Is that the correct thing to do, focusing on engineering and mathematics? Yes. So uh, I'll give you an example for me. Um, I, when I jump, I am going to be uh, rushing T4 on the first day and second day. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the, the main thing that I'll go for first is mathematics and engineering, simply because it uh, decreases your speed ups a lot. Uh, it gives yeah. around 10% each uh, off uh, research and building. Mm -hmm. uh, by far, it's the best buff in the game for researching and building. Yeah, obviously, you want to get these as quick as possible because we will be like building and researching like for months, probably, unless you are spending a lot of money. So I want to go from low spender to high spender with a, with a certain order. So low spender, mid spender to high spender. What are the spending priorities in a jumper account? Because when you first create your account, you will have... A lot of good deals, right? Like King's Coronation, Minamoto, I don't know, 50% off uh, Supply Depot 30-day gem supply or growth fund. I assume that you are going to spend or you do spend for your jumper accounts. So what is your uh, priorities, spending priorities? So the main two things I go for is gem supply and growth fund. Because on gem supply, you do get a deal. Uh, it goes, uh, so for me, it would have been £10 for me. But it uh, knocks it back down to five. You need to you, that is that's the first buy you should ever get in Rise Kingdoms. Mm -hmm. um, you get nineteen thousand gems a month. Yeah, it's just amazing, and you get two thousand two hundred on the first buy. After that, I go for uh, like the dailies. Um, but if you're going from a low spender to a high spender, mm -hmm. uh, you you'll need to max the King's Coronation. Uh, the reason yeah. why I say King's Coronation is because get the universals it's just not it's not one separate build it like for example build and speed up it's not that it's just universals you can spend on whatever you want best bundles i'd say is just king coronation and city of hope uh, I'm, I'm mainly going for them um if minimoto as well for the castle obviously this is a regular purchase right it's not the first day but I was thinking about loose and screws. I think the value of loose and screws is also really good, right? The value on that is, yeah, it's insane for how cheap it is. Mm -hmm. uh, especially if you grind the game and do all the quests, you 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 get a full um, legendary equipment chest right at the end. Yeah, especially for like just five dollars. If you don't need that extra weekly clues, if you can complete it without it, which you can. I mean, getting that five dollar and getting every single reward on this bottom row with a lot of VIP, bunch of sculptures, keys, resources, speed ups. I think Nielsen Screws is also a really, really good purchase. Yes, because you are spending five dollars for about fifty dollars worth of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, another question. This time is for um, Manimoto. Expertise of Minamoto is it doesn't increase his damage. It only bumps the chance from fifty percent to seventy five percent. So it's just extra twenty five percent chance. Obviously, if you're a high spender, you're gonna max him. You you don't care. But 
if you're let's say low to mid spender would you go for max minamoto or just five five something something is good enough uh, if i was a low spender i would not expertise minamoto i would go five five one one uh -huh. uh, because the main two buffs on Minamoto is all you need um, yeah. to do good in the field. Yeah, I, I think the same. I mean, unless you're a re very high spender, you don't need to go for a max Minamoto for sure. Do you think this first purchase double gems worth the value? Like, you spend $100, you get 50k gems. You spend 50, you get 24k. Do you think it's worth it? Uh, I'm going to say no for that one. Mm -hmm. um, the $100... Hundred dollar one, maybe, but you can get that and so much more speed ups and stuff in in just a super dollar bundles. Uh, yeah, you yeah. get so much more stuff. If you're a like a whale, for example, mm -hmm. um, and you've already maxed out all those bundles, and yeah, you'd, you'd go for the gem uh, store. But uh, my recommendation for low spenders, uh, high spenders, is just just don't touch the gem store. Thank you so much for providing those valuable answers as a very experienced jumper player, Jay. And I think you are one of the leaders of a current jumper project, correct? I am the leader of uh, Fallen Angels. Um, mm -hmm. I, am, I believe that we are the most fastest growing right now with highly experienced leaderships. Uh, we've got so many whales and we are going to have a blast in the final yeah. kingdom and KVK. That's great. Having whales is always great, right? Those gold chests. Whales <laughs> and krakens. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much again. And guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I see you on the next one. Bye.